along the road over there, and they brought a lot of that dirt here to fill up that hole. Um, they tried to move as many bodies out of the Wheelock Cemetery and put them over there unmarked. But if you're ever out here walking around and any bones are coming up through the grass, uh, we're not going to say what they were. <laughs> Maybe Harriet will say hello to comfort. <laughs> so we're finding more and more um, that Othello is showing up um, in these in these censuses or in this one it's uh, town marriage records pre-1870 um, he shows up he's a laborer he's black he's a widower and he died November 24th 1853 age 67 so I'm investigating more about him possibly he could be Rufus's dad but we don't know for sure so there's there's a lot of uh, Malbo names. I know we have to get going soon. Um, there's a lot of Malbo names. This one, um, it could be a B and it could be an R. I had my son, Eden, go in the cemetery and actually take a close-up of the stone. This could be the stone that was originally put over Rufus and then when Dolly died and they put him next to her and they put the obelisk up. Or is it someone else? Is it a bee. Um, haven't found any names with bees related to Malvo, to Rufus, his name. Um, <clears throat> this one is for the Vital Records, 1820. Um, there's a bunch of Malbones. Um, a couple names to remember are Evan Malbone, but there's an Evan and an Evan Jr. that are white Malbones. So, you know, did, some of them are listed as being from Brooklyn which could be related to Godfrey Malbone. This is another Evan, but with a B, spelled with a B, Evan Hutchins Malbone. And I found this, um, and it says that he had just passed away. And you mentioned maybe he went to the gold rush, Maggie? There were a lot of people from northeastern Connecticut that went to the gold rush. We have a file at the Killingly Historical Center on it. So, um, you know, they talk about he was uh, the overseer of the Quindabog machine shop. Um, he had a daughter. Ooh, it's a, that's okay. It's another name to, to find out. Um, this one I found, it's just, it's, it's from Headstone Inscriptions. It's sad. It's a six-month-old infant that died named Rachel Malbone. I don't, it doesn't say anything more about her. Um, these are all leads. There's so many leads. <laughs> You know, um, and then this one, thank you, Joy. She gave me this booklet about the Chickering House after I found this article about a new porter at the Chickering House, James H. Malbone, and it says right there that he's a relative of Rufus. So let's see. Um, that's when they were calling it still Pomfret, possibly, because um, Bill told me that the hotel burned down in 1922. And this article was found in the Putnam Patriot newspapers. That those same ones, when I was looking for information about the fire, this showed up. And I, I save everything, and then later I find out, oh good, yeah, that, I need that. You know, I don't know if I need it all yet, but I hold on to stuff, and, and then I put two and two together. So, um, And then this is something that Maggie showed me when I went over to her <laughs> historical society. It's a book, and it's not a very big book, but it is crammed with information. It's a, it's a wonderful resource. Um, it's got 12 pages of Malbones. They could be from anywhere um, for me to check out. I just took a picture of how many there are. This one is uh, another one that Bill gave to me. Um, when I first started looking, like I said, I was looking by hand. I went through all the volumes just looking and looking. And this is the one that, after finding one, an article that Maggie had in her historical society, it led me back to this one. We went right to it. But I didn't know what year the fire was. They, it was a five-year time. So the only way to do it was to go through these big books. Um, so we found it. Thank you. And um, the, Ma the one that Maggie gave me is, or that we found over it, with Maggie is the one on the right. That clipping 
and then I was able to go right to the book and the volume with Bill, and we went found it. Within a minute, we found the article that I had been looking for for who knows how long. It was right there. And that was when the property was sold to Daniel Cox. This is what we've been finding. This is uh, the goats are finding um, right at the surface in our pasture. And when we were going to put fence posts in, on the left, um, the two little, little pieces are green glass. I don't know if the other little piece is a piece of bone, um, but that was over there. And then these are like um, bean pots, possibly cider jugs, maybe um, the green glass belonged to cider or hard cider, maybe beer. Um, the, the ones on the right are metal. I, I don't know what those go to. Um, that the metal stuff, you know, that could be maybe part of um, a plow, maybe uh, not the one that's on the far right. That looks like from a tractor, maybe. But um, the other pieces look like they're from a plow, and I'm thinking that the chains maybe that belong to some part of the plow with the horse. I don't know. <clears throat> okay, move to the next one. Sorry. So I just I looked up the the color of the glass and. That particular one on the bottom there, on the left, that one is glass that was typically found from 1800s to 1850, which would put it right in the timeline of belonging to Rufus if it did belong to him. And then I started playing around with LIDAR. I found this, it's called Connecticut Echo, and it's geospatial data. You put your address in and you can kind of toggle back and forth on your phone or your computer. You can make it so that you can see like um, the details of just the ground. It clears the trees and buildings off of there. It shows you where buildings might have been. It shows you indentations of where things might have been and what I found was, um, I, can't see, I can't see it as well when I'm standing right next to it, but you can see all of these, this is Route 44, you can see all of these stone walls or where there used to be stone walls. And this is 44, this is, my house is right here now, and then this is our barn. And then if you can kind of see the square right there, that's the cemetery. There's all these bumps and holes possibly a well, and these tracks right here, you can't see them, but they look like they're in the same area of where I was showing you where we're finding all the midden and where we're finding, or they're talking about where um, his house was. This looks like a well-used wagon cart depression, and it's, it's still there. These are new images. So, I thought this LIDAR was really cool, and um, I went out and I got a metal detector, <laughs> so that's like another chapter, but uh, yeah, this is um, such an ongoing project still, and I'm really excited about it, and I really thank everybody that's been helping me, and Terry is the technology guru. She can make anything work. She helped me get this, these two things to talk to each other, my laptop and this. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited about this, and thank you so much, and I hope I didn't bore you with all that.